Hey everyone, welcome to T8 Maker Channel. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. If this is your first time, or if you've been and you haven't subscribed, please do consider subscribing. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps to promote the videos and uh, the content on this channel. Today, I wanna to take a look at this particular filament. It's ESUN EPLA HF 3D filament. So this is a filament that's designed specifically for high flow and high speed printers. Eson have provided this filament for me to try out. There's no commitment on my opinion. Uh, they're not getting to review the video before it goes out. Uh, they've merely provided it to me, asked me to try it out and to give my opinion. So my goal here is to test this filament, understand why you would want a high flow or high speed filament what advantage is it and what can I do with it and who is it for? Who wants to buy it? Who would want to buy it? Who would want to spend their money on it and why you might want to do that? So that's the purpose of this. Um, again, as usual, I'm not doing any strength tests. I'm not doing any property tests of the filaments. I don't even think that's what this filament is about, to be honest. Um, it has a very specific usage and use case. Um, there are filaments that are designed for for high speed, there's filaments designed for general printing, there's filaments designed for strength, um, this falls into the high speed category. So we'll take a look at it. Um, I'll go through the prints that I did and talk about my experience with using it. And then I'll come to some conclusions and uh, hopefully this will be useful to you. With that, let's get stuck in. Eson HF, also known as HS, so high flow or high speed. It's a PLA filament. I have it packed here so that it, obviously I like to keep them dry, so I generally pack them in these bags. These happen to be Eson bags as well, but I've had these for a long, long time. I just, I bought a whole batch of them at one point um, and I wanted to try them out. Now, a couple of things to note on this. So these are, this filament is designed for high speed printers. It's specifically designed with high flow in mind. It's not really meant for your normal bed slingers. It's normally meant for these XY or uh, Voron type machines where you wanna do high speed prints um, sort of 200 millimeters per second plus, um, not the standard sort of 50 millimeters per second plus. Now, why would you need this? So why would you need a special filament in order to do that type of printing? Because you can buy any printer uh, filament pretty much and put them in a Bamboo Lab or Creality K1 or whatever printer you want, whatever high speed printer you want, um, and you'll get decent prints. You'll get pretty good prints even at high speed. But the material that's used in the PLA, it's just standard PLA, um, is not designed specifically for high speed printing or high flow. And there's always a risk that you can jam your printer or jam the print head just by pushing the filament through quicker than it can melt um, and trying to print quicker than the, the filament can get into a flow state. So that's the idea behind this. So it's not a miracle PLA. It's not something that you're gonna be printing at super high speeds, you know, five, six, 100 millimeters per second and getting great prints out. But your average high-speed printer, uh, like the Bamboo Lab, who hits 200, 300 millimeters per second in standard mode, will definitely get some advantage out of this, especially if you're printing large items, things that are going to you know, require a lot of filament feed through and you don't want to jam it up. It's designed for prototyping. The idea is, is that being a high-speed, high-flow filament, um, its focus is on fluidity at uh, temperature. Its focus is not strength, it's not glossiness, it's not matte, it's not any of those um, properties. It's mainly to get the flow of the filament at the temperature required as fast as possible through so that you can run high speed prints and get quick samples that you can test and check before finalizing your design and finalizing your print, and then you'll use whatever final filament you decide to use, whether it's ABS, PLA, or whatever. Um, but this will at least allow you to rapid prototype and test out your designs before you get it. 
So that's where this really comes in. That's what the idea behind these types of filaments are. Another thing to note about this particular filament, as you can see, this is a cardboard filament. And um, you have to print out these rings if you want to be able to use it with your, your AMS. Uh, you obviously can't use this roll directly in the AMS. So you can print out these rings for ESON filaments. They have the design on their website. You can download it and um, you print it out. You just clip it onto the reel and it works great. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, works perfectly fine. I actually printed this ring in blue PETG and um, yeah, I've had no issues with it. it. It's working pretty well. The reel itself is quite neat. Um, so we do have a, a quite a neat, not too many tangles, a bit on the top row, but when you go down past the first row or so, uh, it gets very neat. No issues with tangling. This is just clip I use to hold it in place, um, but I've had no issues with it at all tangling during the, the test prints. Now, the diameter of the filament itself, it's actually, it's not exactly 1.75 as it's supposed to be. In my measurements, I've gotten anywhere from 1.72 to 1.73. So I would say it's a 0 0.03 dimension accuracy on the filament diameter. And um, does that create a lot of problems? And um, no, in my tests, it, it hasn't really affected any of the prints. And um, whether I change the filament diameter in the settings or I keep it at 1.75, the prints come out pretty much exactly the same. Um, you know, 0.02 of a, or 0 0.03 of a millimeter is not a huge discrepancy. It might be in some fine printing, but in your average prints, it's not going to make any real difference. Okay, so when setting up these prints, um, for the print settings, I use the default eSun profile for uh, their filament. So they have a profile you can download from the website for this particular EPLA. It's EPLA slash HS for high speed. So you can download that profile. It sets the temperature at 230 degrees C. It sets the flow, it sets the fan speeds, etc. Um, generally, high speed printing, you want high speed fans. You want your fans at maximum to try and harden the filament before your next layer goes down. So that's pretty important. So that was one of the focuses of that particular um, setting along with the actual flow rates, filament size, and the uh, temperatures. So download that filament profile using the bamboo slicer. Uh, we imported that profile and the print process profile as well. So there are some changes to the speed settings that need to be made. You can make these manually or you can just use the profile that's used by eSun or provided by eSun on their website. Again, the default settings on this are not amazing numbers and um, we're not going into uh, four five six hundred millimeters per second and um, i did do some ludicrous tests which will give you an idea of what that looks like but the general speed is around 300 millimeters per second and the acceleration is around 20,000. so it's it's very fairly standard there's nothing amazing in the settings so you might say again to yourself well why would i bother with a special high speed print if it's not going to give me super speeds but well, we'll take a look at it and we'll see why you might want to do that so first things first i went and printed out the benchy so these are the 3d benchies downloaded from printables it's the standard benchy and as you can see it's a pretty good print So this was at the 300 millimeters per second default speeds. And we have very good around the bottom here. No issues of any size, no stringing. So there's no filament hanging down. And everything is where it should be. And we have the, all the correct dimensions where we need to have them. So so at the standard print settings with the standard filament settings, everything went great. I knocked it up to ludicrous to kind of see what will that make as far as the difference. 
and honestly nothing there is no difference at all so if i put this is the standard and this is the ludicrous and the only reason i can tell them apart i wrote it on the bottom in black marker I know it's hard to see, but this one is L for ludicrous and this one is 300 millimeters per second. So there's little to no difference in them. And this is generally what I found. If you're printing something small, you, you can print it at ludicrous speeds and you'll get a very good print. Um, again, the goal of this is not to be the strongest print. It's not to be the shiniest print. It's merely to get you a print that you can test and check for rapid prototyping. So then I was curious about how it would look if we did the lattice um, benchy. So this is again is another very cool design from um, from printables.com um, and links are all below in the description. But again, a very detailed print and it came out really good. Did this at the standard 300 millimeters per second and it came out really good. The only fault on the whole piece is this one little string sticking out other than that perfect not a problem again that was at 300 millimeters per second which is slightly above the default 250 which is on the printer so that was pretty good so i wanted to do an overall 3d print test i really do like this test here because it includes your overhangs holes you've got these structures tubular structures You've got poles, you've got stringing tests, um, you've got straight line tests, and you've got your overhang tests. So it gives you quite a quite a bit of um, of information about how your your filament's printing. So this one here was printed at 300 millimeters per second. So again, very clean print, no issues with it at all. You have this one piece of string just here. The overhangs are very, very good, all the way up to 80 degrees. And then you get a little bit of sagging at 80 degrees. But below 80 degrees, very good, no issues. Obviously, you would have to test, you know, bonding between layers if you wanted to use it for structural use, but that's not the purpose of this. So it's not really relevant here to check that um that strength but i will do a, a quick you know demonstration of what it would look like if you try to put a bit of pressure on these types of things so then i took it up to ludicrous speed now first things first i will say that this is not a genuine ludicrous in the sense that i printed this up to a certain point at standard speed and then when i got to that point i upped the speed to ludicrous so as you can see around here, even with that, there's a lot of bits sticking out at the edges. I mean, you can remove these if this was an important print for you, but um, you know, it's, it's definitely not printing well there. Um, and again, as I say, it's not designed to print at ludicrous speeds. It's just, I wanted to test and see what happens. For the overhangs again all the way up to 80 mil it's almost even better but of course it's not fully bonding so you are getting sagging and drooping if you can see it there no stringing so if we can get in on that so we've got no stringing Holes are good, these tubes are good, the straight lines are good, the overhangs are all good. We have a little bit in one of the overhangs, we have a little bit coming down. So in one of the overhangs we have a little bit sticking down, I don't know if you can see that. It's just on the edge of one of them. A little bit hard to get focus on it. But yet, there's a little bit of a hang down there. But overall, print is really good. Now, as I said, I started this off at standard speed at the bottom. 
and then as I went through the print, um, I upped the speed and brought it up to ludicrous. And there's a reason I did that, and this is the reason. So this was one of these printed at ludicrous speed from the very beginning. And it's actually very in interesting this. It's actually very interesting this because it does actually tell us a lot about how the filament behaves. Um, so as you can see, these straight lines are done at a lower speed because always the bottom layer is done at the lowest speed. So you have no issues on the bottom layer, that's fine. But what happened was when you get to the second and third layer, you start to get these bumps appearing up where the filament isn't coming out fast enough or it isn't melting quick enough in order for it to be able to lay down properly and dry. And of course, the more layers you do, the worse it gets. So you get an even worse layer on the next layer. So it seems, as you can see here, where it's doing a very short run, there's no issues. But as it gets into a longer run, you can see that it starts to lose its ability to keep the flow going and to melt the filament fast enough. So you could probably up the temperature. You could probably adjust the flow rates and up the temperature and that might fix this. Um, but again, it's not designed to do that. This is not what the purpose of this filament is not to be printing these large items at ludicrous speed. It's 300 millimeters per second is the recommended speed. And um, so I can't complain about that, but I also don't think it's impossible to fix this. It's just gonna take a little bit of time and a little bit of playing around with the settings. So because of this, I wanted to take a look next at um, the temperature and flow rates. Okay, from a temperature perspective, I printed this temperature tower. Again, it's pretty good at all temperatures, no issues. You can see here at the bottom that we had a detachment that was at 190 degrees. And um, this would tell me that the you know, this was taken off the bed and I will say everything stuck to the bed pretty rigidly, even with glue and um, took a little bit of effort to get everything off. And I had to actually use a blade to get underneath things to lift them off the, the print plate. But when I was taking this off, I was just wobbling it to try and take it off and it just broke clean off. But this actually tells us something. Um, so it's not wasted. So layer bonding is pretty bad at 190. So if layer bonding is important to you, 190 is not the temperature you want to be working at. As we go up the temperature tower, if you look at them all the way up, there's a little bit of stringing. It's very hard to see. But if you check, maybe you can see that 225 appears to be arguably the best temperature. You may differ in opinion, but when I look at it, I think 225 seems to be about the best. 230, which is the recommended print, has a little bit of stringing. But again, it's negligible. So I don't think you're going to notice a whole pile of difference on what temperature you print. But definitely 195, 190. It's not hot enough. Make sure it's hotter. <laughs> and that will help with layer bonding. So we've got a temperature. 225, 230, looks good. The next thing I wanted to check out was print speeds and see if there was any difference in standard print speeds. Now again, I'm gonna say here, it's not probably a great test. And the reason it's not a great test is because it's a fairly small item. And what I've found with this filament is you can pretty much ramp up the speeds if the item is small and not see much issues. But, you know, you can tell down here at 230 and 200, you're probably getting the best print of all of them. But as you go up, it gets a little bit out of control as you get up here into delicate areas up at this level. And also, as we've seen from this print here, that the higher speeds on large surfaces can actually be a, a lot worse. So if you're printing something small, two, three hundred, even up to four, maybe even five hundred, and you're going to get a reasonably decent print. Obviously, the faster you go, it's going to go down in quality a little bit. But if you're printing something large, don't go beyond the 300 millimeters. Just stick to 300 millimeters. 
As far as acceleration goes, no issues with any of the acceleration. All of them turned out good quality. So acceleration is not really an issue here, but that wasn't expected to be the case because it's it's stated to go up to 20,000. So it should be able to do it. So it does and no issues with that. The next thing I wanted to check and that's our little row of cubes here. So I wanted to check dimensional accuracy of the prints. These are 20 by 20 by 20 X, Y, Z cubes or Z cubes, depending on where you come from. Um, you've got 200 by 200. So this just gives us a size comparison. So if there's any variances in the smaller ones, you can see those variances where they get bigger with the big print. So that will tell us if this is a potentially a printer issue or is it a slicer issue and maybe possibly a filament issue. So I'm using a set of Mitotoyu calipers. I find this to be pretty accurate. Um, I've had no issues with it. It seems to give me consistent numbers and consistent um, measurements. So that's what we're going to use to measure these blocks. So I'll try and get this in the camera and so that everybody can see. So we'll zero off. And uh, sorry about the sun in the background, but unfortunately um, I don't have a studio, so it's difficult to block out the sun. <laughs> we'll take a measurement here and um, we should be getting 20 by 20 by 20. Generally, the general opinion is a deviance of anywhere up to 0.03 is okay is it you know it's just you can ignore that anything above 0 0.03 you might need to do some adjustments whether it's adjustments to your printer it might be a calibration issue or you might need to do some adjustments to your print in order to get the right accurate um, print so if I take a look at it I get a clear 20 mil but if I move down a little bit you can see it's dropping down to 19.92 which is a 0 0.08 deviance, 19.903, back up to the edge again, 20.05. Do the same here. We get 19.95 at the top, 19.95, 19.98. So this particular angle is particularly consistent. If we go with the Y axis, 19.98, 19.95, 19.97, again, reasonably consistent. 20.23, 20.3, 20.2, again, relatively consistent. And we wanna go with the X axis, 20.23, 20.24, 20.25, and then 19.92, 19.94, and then 20.06. So there's variances of up to 0 0.1 of a millimeter. Now, 0 0.1 of a millimeter, let's be clear on this. If I can get it there, well, that's 0 0.9. So I'll give you an idea of what 0 0.9 of a millimeter is. So, you know, if you find even 0.2, if you're point, finding 0 0.01 of a millimeter, unless you're doing something really, really important with dimensions, um, it's not that big a deal. Um, we're talking minute differences. So just for a variance, I did various different print settings. I, I got consistent results right across the board. I then decided to print this big block just to get an idea of like, is this a, um, is this thing going to get worse the bigger I print? As in like, am I going to get a higher deviance between um, measurements, what I expect and what I get? And what I found is if I go up to it, sorry, it's actually 50 mil, not 200 mil. Um, you got 49.84, 49.89. Forty-nine point nine three. If you go this way, 
and 9.1 or 9.0 and if you take the y-axis 44 49.99 50.05 and 49.99 and the x-axis 50.02 50, 50.06. So again, we're looking at relatively stable deviances between them. It's slightly worse on the bigger block. And obviously that means that the bigger the print, it's slightly worse it's gonna be. And the question is, is that my printer? I printed this with PTG at the same time, just to get an idea. 19.93, 19.94, Actually, let me just zero this to make sure it's zero. Yep. So 19.93, 19.93, and 20.06, and then 19.95, 95, and 0.01. So I don't think it's the filament that's the problem. Um, I think it may be something with the flow calibration or the overall calibration of my printer it might be just fractionally out. Um, I don't believe it's worth messing with the settings of the printer. Um, I think people have had some horror stories trying to change the settings on their printers using you know, other slicers and other settings. And I, I, don't, think it, um, I don't think it's necessary I don't think I'm going to be printing anything that's 0.2 of a millimeter intolerance um, and everything is well below 0.2 so I don't think it's worth changing the settings but I also don't think it's a filament issue it's potentially my printer just needs some slight adjustments and it may get more accurate but again it's not worth it for me um, I'm not really printing anything that's that focused on, um, on precision but it's good to know um, the vice grips printed without any issues and again apologies for the sun nothing I can do about it uh, but everything works no issues as would ever every other PLA I've tried the overhangs are all good here no issues with the overhangs kind of loose but I mean they're all a little bit loose this might be just a little bit looser than previous prints, but it works. And it's fairly decent. You can clamp something pretty tight. So I'm pretty happy with that print. Looked pretty good. And I think compares pretty well to previous prints. And then the catapult. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on these, but good spring in the uh, in the springs here. Good strength. We do have a little bit of a printing issue here, where again the dimensions might not be 100% accurate. Again, that could be my printer, uh, but I do notice a little bit of a lift here where it's lifted on one side. The other side doesn't seem to have that problem. But other than that, everything else pretty good. It's what I'd expect from PLA. Um, you know, PLA is not super strong for that kind of strength. It's hard um, and it can take a bit of abrasion, but it's not strong for bending it's very rigid so when you bend it all the strain goes straight into the part and it will snap and um, pla is a little bit more or sorry petg is a, has a little bit more given it and it's less likely to snap but it's more likely to bend and uh, that's just one of the properties of those particular filaments and again the spring here it's pretty good that's Esun EPLA HF or HS, which is high flow or high speed. So what do I think of this overall and, and should you buy this filament? 
or should you just buy straightforward PLA? Is it good value? So first things first, why would you buy this filament? Um, I think you would buy this filament because you want to do rapid prints on a high speed printer like the Bamboo Labs or the Creality K1 or one of those types of printers. Um, you're not going to be running generally at ludicrous speed, you're, you just want to run it at the standard speeds, you want to get a good decent print out and you want to be able to rapidly prototype your designs or your, your tests or whatever it is that you're trying to do and you want to try, you know, change a setting, rapidly print it, change a setting, rapidly print it, change a design, rapidly print it. Um, this is a pretty good filament for doing that. Could you do it standard PLA? Yeah, you probably could. Um, would you get the same results? Yep, you might. You might get the same results. I'm quite impressed with how this prints at high speed. I'm quite impressed with the dimensions of the prints that come out. There are some minor little errors on the prints. Some of those could be related to the print bed uh, adhesion and holding the print down as you're printing it. And some of it's probably going to be related to some minor settings and some of it's going to be related to the filament. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if I want to do a rapid print, I want to get something quick. This filament does a very good job of it. Um, no issues whatsoever. And it's been 100% reliable. I haven't had any issues. I've had no clogging in my print head generally overall it's been pretty good to use and um, so it's consistent it's reliable no issues with my printer no issues with the print head no issues with the filament every time decent print no issues except for when i tried to go outside the settings and i tried to print ludicrous speed for something that um you know for something that's large and that's well above the the specified settings so overall it's a pretty good filament as far as price goes, um, I don't know if it's value or not. It depends on what filament you normally use. Um, I don't know what price it's going for in various different locations, so you'd have to take a look at it and make a decision yourself whether the price is right. But from what I've seen, it's in and around the same price as other types of filaments, PLA filaments. So from that perspective, it's, it's not unreasonable value. It's not bad value. Could you use the prints for long-term use? I think you could. I think you could definitely use the prints for long-term use. Um, I think that those prints, the prints that come out of this are not, you know, don't necessarily have to be thrown away. Can you tune the settings? I think the settings are very, very good that are provided by Eson, but you might want to maybe do some adjustments yourself. Um, certainly if you want a more glossy print, you might want to up the temperature a little bit. You know, if you want to, Make sure that the flow is good and you want to try and do some more ludicrous printing. You might increase the flow and temperature and um, just little things like that. You could probably play around with to get better prints, but overall pretty good. And um, really it's down to whether or not you feel it's worth your time and your money buying a filament that is designed for high speed, which has additives added into it that help with the high flow. Um, but again, in my testing, the real advantage of this has been is that when I print high speed, I've had no print head issues. Everything is printed out first time, every time, no issues. And that to me is where the value lies. Eson have no say in the content of this video. They've just provided the filament and just to try it out, see what I think of it and give my opinion. So uh, that's exactly what I've done here. Um, if you want to purchase this, there are no affiliate links and uh, there's no sponsored links. Um, you can go and take a look on Eson's website. I'll leave a link to the actual filament in the description just so you can find it. And I'm sure from there you'll be able to find some place to purchase it or you find some place local where you can get it. But again, this is not a sponsored or affiliated um, video. It's they, They've just provided it for free to me and I've been able to test it and come up with my own opinions. And if uh, you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them below. So with that said, this has been Eson EPA HF or HS, high flow, high speed. This has been T8 Maker Channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, goodbye.